In this next section, we're going to discuss the meshing, specifically hex meshing of complex components, and we're going to use shell structures for partitioning. And I'm going to import a pretty nasty component. Clearly, you can see that this is not hex meshable out of the gate. C is not going to be able to mesh this with hexes, as we can clearly see without making some modifications with regard to partitioning. We're going to take advantage of shell structures, uh, specifically shell extrusions, and we're going to use those solely for the purpose of meshing. I'm going to jump on that top face and then just create some partitions. And what I'm doing now is creating shell structures. This might seem a bit strange if you've not done this before, but it's actually a very powerful technique. It's been within and captive within CA for quite some time. So we're just going to take advantage of the natural geometry and tangencies of the component. And all I'm doing here is just creating shell geometry that I'm going to extrude. And again, this might seem a bit strange, but all we're going to do is just create some partitions. And these are partitions that might take you, if you didn't create them this way, uh, you, it would take many features, 20, 30, 40 features easily. All right, so there's a couple more that we're going to create. Not too many. Just allow the, the mesh to, to, to propagate through and, and do it in a gentle fashion along this edge. This part, this area here, ends up being the most difficult aspect with regard to the meshing of this component. So we have essentially circles that I'm going to extrude through, and these are extruding through the radii effectively uh, to help us come up with a, a, a mesh that can, that can be handled in an appropriate fashion, either through an extrusion or a sweep, depending on what area we're in. This should cover it. Now, you can see that the arrow is pointing up. I don't want it up, I want it down. And I want to include the internal boundaries, and I know that a value of 26 units will take it all the way through to the bottom of the structure. Okay, now, if I go to Mesh, we can see, first, that we clearly, on all the volumes in the cells, we have a completely hex meshable component. But what do we do about these faces? Well, we don't want them. Uh, they were specifically made for partitioning, so I'm going to use our selection tools to remove the cells from the viewport and then take advantage of one click and remove faces. And when I bring it back, I now have just the cells. And I do know for this particular geometry that this face here needs to be virtual topology, uh, created virtual, we need to create virtual topology on this face and merge those two faces uh, for the su uh, successful creation of the mesh. And I know that my mesh size needs to be around 0.35 millimeters. And I'll leave the defaults. Yellow is swept mesh, and <laughs> the structured mesh is green. And we'll see how well this works out. It should mesh, we'll see. Okay, so pretty clear, pretty quickly you can see that you can generate a very, uh, a very, very high quality mesh very quickly. And we've done it in four features. We've created a shell, removed faces, and then done one virtual topology face. And we've got a hex mesh completely defined on this component, which is again something that would take 20, 30, 40, maybe 100 features to get this done. Uh, in the past, this would need to be done on this face over here. You know, in the context of bottom-up meshing, and we don't, we don't need to do that in this case. That covers it for this section.